Hi there, Sagittarius. Welcome to your weekly tarot reading. So um, I want to talk to you guys about your love life. And um, I'm going to do this in a more intuitive way, mainly because I feel like the cards are telling a story, not in the depiction of the meaning of the cards, but more like it's telling the story, the beginning and towards the end of a relationship. And I feel like for many of you, this is a marriage, a significant type of a relationship where you've been together for many years. So it starts out here with the wedding, you know, the coming together with the Four of Wands. And this is like, you were very young, you were young and naive. And I almost feel like for many of you, you know, you were like in your early 20s, um, very late 20s, getting into a situation with somebody, you had really, really high hopes you know, the nesting instincts. We're going to have a family. We're going to uh, have children. Everything is going to be great. And you were very, very starry-eyed. And you went into this with, with a lot of optimism. And the person that you're dealing with, I feel like they were able to match you. So whatever you're bringing to the table, like financially, they were able to match what, um, with what you're bringing. And I also feel like this is a blessed union. There might have been somebody that fixed you up. There might have been like a mutual friend, a family member, somebody that you trust. So you, because you trusted that person, you trusted the union. You trusted that everything was going to work out. And so you had, you, you were like starry eyed and very optimistic that this union was going to be the happily ever after. And then I also feel, as well, we have the Ten of Cups. The Ten of Cups is a card about children sharing a blessed union with another person. You were very in love with this person, and they, vice versa, were very in love with you. And I feel like, you know, um, the more we begin to move away from the first two cards, the, the more the differences become a lot more glaring. So it was a very ideal match, mainly because you saw the other person as your soulmate. You saw the other person as like, you know, that happily ever after. This person is so much like me. They understand me. They are antisocial just as I'm antisocial. They're blunt just as I'm blunt. And we're going to, you know, uh, create little children that are exactly like us. We're going to watch them grow. For some of you, you might have three children. There are three flowers there and you're watching it unfold. You're watching the miracle of life happen and you're in it, you know, together. And we move along and we have the lovers. This is major life decisions. Some of you might have moved very far away to be with your romantic partner. Others of you, your romantic partner, might have moved really far away, away from you. They were either deployed, they had a job elsewhere, they had, you know, it, it was like life was calling and we had to move together. I had to move to be with the other person. They have to move to be with me or they had to move for a job. And so I feel like there were... There was stability, but there was also turbulence. And I also feel like there was a third party as well interfering in the relationship that also led to a situation where it was very, very difficult for you to recover from it. So the relationship itself, there was a lot of joy. There was a lot of, you know, it, it had a long history. So I feel like for many of you, you have been married to this person or have dated this person for a very, very long time. And you had overcome some major milestones with one another. So if you look at those masks, it's like one is happy and one is sad. So it's just like balancing out the good times and the bad times in this relationship. And balancing out, you know, um, I, I feel like you had to, your, your role when your partner was not in the picture, you had to be the mom and the dad to the kids. And I feel like you did it with such grace and you did it with, without complaining. And you did it with such dignity. And I also feel like if there were third parties interfering in the relationship, you never let it show. You might have been resentful inside. But no one knew about it. 
not even your best friend, not even your family members, not even, you know, the people that you confided in, you suffered in silence. And I feel like you internalize a lot of that pain. You never had an outlet for it. You never saw a therapist. Your partner, I feel like, you know, it, it wasn't so much forgiveness. It was just putting on a mask, pretending everything is okay, and possibly not confronting the relationship partner because you might have been in denial about it or you didn't want the confrontation to break up the family unit because you really loved this person. And so we escalate here from something that is, you know, it started out with a very, very good beginning. The four of wands, like the hope, the optimism, and the similarities between the two of you. Ten of cups. These are like, you know, peas in a pod. And then it becomes like this, the five of wands, where there's a lot of resentment. There's a lot of like, interrogation. Where did you go? Who were you with? How late did you stay out? And things like that. And so the differences are glaring, right? It's like a person arguing with a tree. They are different species. Whereas in your, your starry-eyed and optimistic stage, you thought the other person was exactly like you. And I feel like a lot of the times, you know, we get so uh, wrapped up and we get so angry over failed relationships was that if it's a, a significant relationship, it could be good or bad, but if it's significant, it taught us a lot about ourselves. And I feel like it taught you that, I feel like it, it kind of, you know, shook the foundation and made you a lot less naive. It made you more weary of people. It made you more paranoid. It made you um, distrustful of other people. And you guys are very, very sincere and very trusting of other people. And so I feel like this relationship really did a number on many of you. And as a result of it, it, it kind of hurts you on a very innate level. And it's hard for you to recover from that and, and go back and bounce back to your optimistic self. But I also feel you really, really love this person. And so right now you're in a stage where you feel like you're, you're taking on that victim stance. You know, how could you have done this to me? Where did you go? Who was it? And, and things like that. And what I feel is happening here, if this is not you, if you're the one that is stepping outside of the relationship, because that could very well be the case, the other person is doing this to you. It's, it's the blame game, pointing fingers. And the truth is, and honesty is the best policy because you have somebody here that really loves you and you have somebody that you really love. And over time, I feel like, you know, through the course of the relationship, people drift apart. It's natural. We are constantly evolving. We are constantly growing. I don't see the love diminishing, but I feel like somebody is um, playing the role of the mom and the dad in the relationship, playing the parent in the relationship, and the other person has really let themselves go. The other person has accumulated, look at that tree, has accumulated so much baggage from life that they're not even a, a, a semblance of a human being anymore. And I feel like for some of you, you're beating a dead horse. You're asking somebody questions that they're not going to give you answers to. And so if this conflict escalates and if this is an ongoing conflict, you have to cut your losses. You need to get yourself out of this state because it's turning your world upside down and it's got you very emotionally topsy-turvy. You're putting on this mask to the world, like pretending, oh, my relationship is fine. Everything is, you know rainbows and unicorn, but the reality is far from it. The reality is that there are a lot of uh, pent up like resentments and jealousies and hostilities. And I feel like somebody is, I'm looking at the roots and you know, roots usually means you're dealing with someone who's very, 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 very slow to act. 
but at this point they've already like uprooted they've already uprooted and they're ready to go and so the the animosity might drive them to go okay so I feel like the energy is very heavy and I feel like if you're in this conflict laden type of an environment you have to cut your losses if you feel like no matter what I can't forgive this or I can't trust this person again then you really should not allow um, yourself to stay in this relationship the trust is gone the trust has been breached it's not going to come back together on the flip side for those of you who are single I feel like you have gotten out of a very significant relationship you're trying to find your center you're trying to find your footing and you are single and you're not planning to date dating is so far from your um, frame like it, it's so far from your imagination right now like you can't even wrap your head around I'm not ready to date okay and then for others, I feel like you might be interested in somebody who's already in a union. We have here the Ten of Cups you're as your partner. And the Ten of Cups means, you know, they're actually in another relationship. You might be um, the, the third party. You might be the mister or the mistress in this union. And so it's breeding a lot of jealousy and envy and it's a situation where you are really attracted to the other person they are attracted to you but at the end of the day they're coming home to their partner they're coming home to their children and you're the person that is you know out here waiting waiting for the other person to come back waiting to, it's like biding your time you know when are they going to be single and I feel like it's not the best situation to be in okay um, I'm sensing for for people who are newly married there are some issues and I'm looking at this four of wands and five of wands it's an escalation the next one is the six of wands and the Six of Wands is a really good card. So we, we have an escalation. Four of Wands, which is a happy marriage. And then we have the Five of Wands, which is conflict. So this is just a natural cycle. Don't let it deter you. Don't let it discourage you. The next one, Six of Wands, is a victory card. So I feel like somebody's going to step up and do exactly what you want. Okay? And I feel that sometimes it takes, it takes conflict for us to finally voice our opinions and to give the other person a piece of our mind and then once we give them a piece of our mind it'll, it'll kind of um, spark some fire under them and, and get them to get moving so I feel like you're, you might be dealing with somebody who's very slow to act and then conflict is the best way to get them to respond and to do something um, other areas of your life what I'm feeling first of all from this spread here is the responsibilities of child rearing it's um, it's overwhelming okay maintaining the household cooking taking care of the kids busing the kids from childcare to soccer practice to school to babysitter to the movies and then taking care taking the kids and all of their friends you know to sleep over to monitor to go to school dances like all the responsibilities of child rearing is becoming a lot more overwhelming I'm also seeing as well um, the partner so you know whenever we have kids and I, I, I can't you know um, I've heard it from other people but I can't really attest to it I don't have children but I feel like somebody feels neglected because now all the attention is on the children so the relationship is um, is, is between the mom and the child and the dad and the child rather than between the mom and the dad as a married couple so I feel like that can also interfere with the relationship here as well but I feel like a lot of responsibilities work and home and trying to balance everything else 
and I feel like you know you guys have a an abundance of energy you and the Scorpio people I don't know where you get it from but you guys have an abundance of energy you get things done and you do it with such grace that a lot of the times I feel like you can you can put up with a lot and not complain and so can the Scorpios they put up with a lot and they never ever ever complain and you do it with such grace that you know people don't think well they, they look at you do it and they don't they, they think it's easy and so I feel almost like that's where all of your time is being consumed okay taking care of the the family taking care of the family unit taking care of other people some of you might be called upon to take care of a family member um, elderly parents a younger child taking care of them in a very nurturing way possibly you know doing errands for them um, driving the kids to soccer practice taking care of their emotional health is what I'm seeing and I feel as if this is a week where you start to feel the weight of all the responsibilities and you need some time to decompress and relax and to really take care of yourself so don't neglect self-care in the process of giving so much of yourself away to other people this is a really beautiful card it denotes you know possibly new children in the picture nieces nephews um, even your own children and I also feel like you know it takes two to, to make a baby right so both parties need to be on board when it comes to the responsibilities it's not fair for one person you in particular to do it all on your own so I'm feeling here that you know you have some beautiful new starts that are coming into the picture and um, I feel like the responsibilities of it uh, ju is just a little bit overwhelming you're gonna get used to it you're gonna do it with grace with style but I feel like right now you feel like you're living this provisional life like I'm just gonna do this for now until it's done and then that's when I can you know live my life so it seems like this week is very temporary even in your love sector it's almost like okay I just got out of a relationship I'm just gonna be single for now when I'm ready that's when I'll date so it's you're prolonging that provisional life and I hope you're aware of that so that you can you know stop denying yourself of your own time me time I need me time because I've been working so hard or you know I need to stop start dating again because um, my last relationship was years ago and I used that as an excuse to not get out there so I feel like you're prolonging something and you need to put an end to the the, the procrastination okay I'm going to leave it at that Sagittarius I hope it is helpful for you guys um, I wish you all the best okay and um, let me see if there is anything else coming in here let me see about your I actually need to do this because um, the love situation is a little bit confusing what is Sagittarius's advice for love for this week We have here the page of wands this is news messages that's going to be coming in it's coming in like invitation you know somebody um, seeking you out and they have here the fool you're going to be starting over you're going to get a clean start you're going to go out with new people and then we have here the ace of swords and the ace of swords is finality seeing somebody that you really like or somebody is like uh, eyeing you possibly an air sign Aquarius Gemini and Libra this is somebody new and we have a Gemini vibe here with the lovers card so I feel like you have a new person that's going to be coming into the picture and you're going to be walking in that direction okay you're not looking back at your past anymore so I feel like many of you newly singles uh, you've got somebody that you're walking towards and there's going to be a lot of communication and the communication and gathering and going out and dates like actual dates going on a date with somebody seeing them outside in their natural habitat and you know um, you're gonna get a new lease on your love life okay so whatever relationship if you're still in it 
you kind of need to draw the line and you know cut your losses all right i wish you all the best sagittarius take care bye bye